to another launch in the Moonsucker 2 series. And as I promised in the previous episode, we are going to see something new and this is it. This is the Hauler Mark II. As its name suggests, it is designed to haul stuff. Yeah. If you remember, the entire purpose of that Moonsucker operation is to get fuel from the moon to my space station, the Franz. And of course, in order to do that, the tanks have to get to the station somehow. And that's where the hauler comes in. Look at its magnificence. This is truly a beast of a cargo ship. Once it is fully equipped, it weighs 721 tons without cargo and offers about 7.5 meters per second of delta V. With cargo, which is 9 full S3 fuel tanks, and here we have our separation of the aerodynamic assistant module. And what? what oh. Okay, well, not okay. Hmm. I did not initiate any stage separation and I did not move the vehicle any... What is going on here? Holy crap. Well, that wasn't good, was it? Again! All right, let's do this from... No, we don't do this. Huh. Why are you exploding, Kraken? Again. All right, here we are back at the launch pad, and I thought, besides a new cinematic, I designed the ship from scratch. Well, not really the entire ship, but I redesigned the entire booster assembly. Previously, I kind of had them attached completely at those big docking ports, and now I have kind of a mixture, and it's a little bit more segmented. You'll all see what's going on. Basically, in the previous incarnation, I tried to do almost an SSTO style, and here I have a bit more stages at my disposal. Okay, now we're going to see the first stage separation. Ha! Who needs a Korolev cross when you can have a Kerbal Triangle? That was nice, quite satisfying, I might add. Alright, as I was trying to tell you before, there are some specs to this thing. And oh, and I mentioned before, oh, we have another stage separation going up. There we go. All right, final booster stage, heading back up, in, well, heading it to orbit. And this time everything went without the hitch. There we are, we are doing our final burn. And once we've done that, separate the booster, it's still on a suborbital trajectory, so it will impact on Kerbin and not be space debris, which I don't like. And now we are in orbit with the Hauler Mark II. You can see it has a lot of nuclear engines, and yeah, reason being is because I want to haul a lot of cargo. Before I told you that this thing has 720 tons and 7.5 thousand meters per second of delta V, but that is only empty. Once you put cargo on it, it has a lot less and that's about 2,900 meters per second of delta V. And speaking of cargo, here it comes, at least part of it. The Hauler Mark II is capable of carrying 9 full S3-14400 tanks, which weigh 82 tons each. So this is kind of the payload that I'm going to take from the moon to the France to fill it up. 
and 2920 meters per second of delta v should be enough to get myself from the moon to uh, my space station. And look at this, this is my cargo. The entire rocket is, well, kind of a cargo fairing. And inside it is my payload that I'm going to dock to the hauler. And yes, this rocket is an SSTO. No other stage was used than these uh, six booster elements on the outside. We have another of our squid tug incarnations. And I mentioned before in the previous episode that we're going to set up a crude base on the moon sucker mission. And in order to do that, of course, we have to have some accommodations for our crew. And therefore, here it is. The base lab habitation thing module. And we have docked it and are heading back inside the tunnel. Well, that's not really the name of the spaceship. I don't think I gave it a name. It's just like, it looks like a tunnel. All right, heading back in. And yeah, this was some pretty tedious docking, I have to say. I had to get in, grab a tank, get back out, turn around, dock it to a docking port that is in range, and then repeat until finished. In the meantime, for some reason, those vehicles drifted apart from each other, so I always had to do some adjustments with that. The squid tug that you see here will come in handy when we get to the spine and will be sort of my second tug or backup there, so I can handle two tugs at once. Maybe I can manage that, let's see. Those tugs also have their own propulsion system, so in theory I could use them to rendezvous with my carry haul, the thing that gets tanks from the surface of the moon up to orbit, without that thing having to rendezvous with the spine. So the squid tug would rendezvous with the carry hull, grab the tank and then rendezvous with the spine and deliver the tank to it. Alrighty then, okay. We're going to have to have this thing turned around. And yeah, you can already guess why these spaceships drift apart, because I hit them all over the place. NASA should not hire me to do their docking, believe me. Or they create everything out of really sturdy materials. You can maybe see some light bluish glow from the nuclear engines. That's why I put some lights in there. I thought it makes for a nice addition to have some kind of ambient lighting in there. And this makes for some really cool optics. I really like those kind of tunnel things or tube things where you have to slide through in a video game or fly through. Reminds me kind of uh, one of the first training missions in TIE Fighter. You know that really really great space fighting simulation, well not really simulation but space fighter game back in the 90s? I had that on floppy disks, believe it or not. And there was kind of an introductory mission to the controls and whatnot, and in order to complete that you had to do some kind of parkour through tunnels in space. Yeah, I never got the reason why you would want to do that in space, because you really have a lot of space in space and a lot of space here in this spaceship. Look at that, that's almost hypnotizing. Wow. And back out again. Yeah, we dropped some tanks onto the hauler, and now it's time to say goodbye to our carrier. Well, it has some fuel left, and I thought maybe I could land it, but yeah, not when I ruined almost everything inside before even getting close to the surface. 
Also the fuel was already really low and yeah. Besides that, I really suck at landing on Kerbin. Boom! Next up is getting the crew out into space. But you'll see that in the next episode. Thanks for watching. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.